Welcome once again to SIARC, to one of our, another of our lectures on the fall semester. Um, I hope for those of you who are students in the audience that your midterms are going well or they're about to go, to go well. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Alper Derin Boas uh, to lecture at SIARC. Um, Alper is an architect with a practice base in Istanbul in Turkey, uh, even though he has been partially Angelino for a big period of his life. Um, I think there are many qualities on the work that I find interesting and you will find during the course of the lecture, and there are many things that we can talk about it. But I think I want to focus uh, and I want to center on a couple of concepts which I think it makes his work um, fascinating and unique. And at the same time, part of a larger conversation, as many times I mentioned, architecture is in many ways a contractive, um, it's a collective construction. So you're always working in, in dialogue with, with, with other ideas or things that are floating up there in the world. One of the things I want to focus that I find in Alper's work fascinating is an issue that I think many people are invested these days, and I think it's, it remains um, a challenge, and, but at the same time an opportunity, which is the relation between ideas that they flow from country to country, so for the lack of a better world, have to do with global in terms of technology and innovation, and Alper is heavily invested in that. At the same time, operating in a context, um, of course, he, he does work outside uh, Turkey and Istanbul, but a big chunk of the work happens there. And this is a very loaded content. This is a city with deep, rich history. Um, and I think many people are trying to figure it out these days. What is the relation between innovation and what is the relation with local cultures, with local conditions, with, with your own biography? At the same time, it's also misconception that we many have about cities, that we, we tend to create one idea of the city, and Istanbul, like many other major cities in the world, they're not one thing, there are many things, and architecture has a role to play. And you will find out that some of his projects are operating in a certain part of the city, they're trying to bridge between what we think, the tradition of the old of the city, and what is new, and what push forward. And again, that dialogue between innovation and contemporary with elements that have to do with the culture. You will see how much that is in play. I don't know how much Alper will talk about that, but there is also this notion again, uh, and he's obsessed, you will see that the, the work is very obsessed, trying to incorporate uh, many of the topics that many of you discuss on a regular basis here in the school, but apply into practicing in, uh, in trying to build them and trying to navigate all the political complexities that it comes to do a building, uh, and to do some of the buildings of the scale that he's working on. So. It's always great to have uh, practicing architects uh, coming to talk to the school and practicing architects when trying to navigate, as I said, some of the catching up and keeping up with whatever culturally appropriated at any given time, at the same time dealing with the mechanisms of what it takes to make a building and what it takes to put in the context in which each of us, we have to operate on a regular basis, in, 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 on a regular basis. So it's in that spirit that I want to frame at least my introduction. Of course, the work is way more than that. It has to do with many of the variables, but that's the one I find um, particularly intriguing um, in terms of how Alper and his team trying to navigate. So without further ado, uh, please join me in welcome Alper to Sayak. Thank you, Hernan. It's a, a beautiful introduction. Uh, I'll try to uh, stay in the same zone. <laughs> I'll try to match the expectations. Uh, thank you for inviting. Uh, it's great to be in LA. Um, although there is no uh, complete intact part of the city I remember as beautiful, it still is a very nice place. I think it's partially also uh, people uh, creating ideas in LA. Uh, a lot of the times people 
uh, generating ideas and uh, sending out to the world. And I think SciArc is a big part of that uh, in terms of uh, architectural production. So I also am really happy to be here with you guys. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the SciArc community for uh, being, um, uh, being a, a north light in uh, innovation. So it's, uh, it's really beautiful to be here. I'll talk about I'll talk about geospaces. Uh, so it is a combination. Uh, it is a collection of uh, our work uh, in recent ten years. Uh, we call it geospaces. Uh, in the same name, we published a book recently. It was uh, uh, it was uh, we had an event uh, like a year ago uh, back in New York Center of Architecture, and uh, we talked about uh, in this book we are trying to talk about. Um, how we navigate the complexities of today and how we find our way. Um, because also architecture profession is extremely complex. Uh, it is one of the most complex professions uh, I know uh, today uh, to practice and it is maybe most uh, undervalued in uh, certain cir circumstances. Uh, so you really need a kind of a direction. Uh, I know a lot of young people here, uh, also students and uh, recent graduates, maybe also watching online. So I try to, uh, I'll try to also uh, uh, reflect on the main ideas why we do what we do. Uh, so we do, uh, we we are actually an Istanbul-based uh, office uh, since 2014. Uh, we had the chance to work on in 15 countries. We have fabricated 230 uh, projects. Uh, we collaborated with many engineers. Uh, we also have uh, kind of uh, partners that we work closely in uh, all sorts of uh, projects. And we have been uh, producing more than 6 million square meter uh, project in size. And uh, in on, on the side, we also try to uh, publish uh, ideas as much as possible because the uh, ideas that you generate for projects are not be able to uh, get into reality as quick. So I thought, uh, we thought uh, publishing uh, is really part of an interesting thing. Uh, we also had the chance to work in, on really large scale projects. Uh, and uh, this story is maybe make another, the stories that how we work, how we get to work on these projects and how we navigated uh, the uh, problematics in these projects, maybe a completely different uh, lecture uh, subject. But uh, being able to work in different locations uh, in Germany, obviously in Antalya, uh, a green hub, uh, which, which is a uh, ecological new settlement that's happening is uh, about uh, 600 acres of land. Uh, we, are, we had the chance to work on uh, new Tashkent strategic planning. Uh, we had the chance to bring in a lot of international renowned architects uh, into this uh, project. Um, and so on. So uh, I think uh, we kind of felt our, ourselves uh, in a place that we've uh, started feeling responsible about how we do our, how how we affect uh, the built environment. Uh, maybe you are very familiar about this graphic recently uh, through the sustainability issues. I'm not going to talk about the sustainability. Uh, I don't see myself as a sustainability advocate, uh, but I think this graphic these graphics. Uh, contemplate in a very interesting uh, reality. So what we see here is that uh, our uh, buildings being responsible for uh, about 40% of the carbon emissions uh, in, in, in the atmosphere. And uh, this would only, uh, this would only uh, equal to 13% uh, of spendings in construction in comparison to global, uh, global GDP. So uh, for a little bit of economy, we are generating a lot of problems for the world, I believe. And how we do that is, I think, also problematic. Uh, we are on the, on the right side of the, uh, the graphics, you will see the architecture services economy. It's uh, about 2.8% uh, percent, uh, in comparison to all the other service industries, uh, which makes, uh, uh, which makes uh, architecture, uh, architecture people uh, for a little amount of money and attention, we generate a huge problem 
we, we not generate, but we kind of uh, re relevant to this uh, problem that's, is, that's going on. So, uh, like I said, I'm not a sustainable advocate, but uh, we try to see uh, things uh, in our practice. We try to see uh, the major problematic uh, behind the things. So that's what we try to look at this. Um, that's how we uh, try to look at uh, things in the, in the general sense. And uh, together with the uh, re recent South Pole uh, uh, scandal, I think things are uh, going to be a more uh, complex for uh, sustainable issues. So uh, we definitely need to have a different uh, point of view for uh, this, uh, I believe. And how we, um, if, if you look at and one, one very useful approach uh, to understand our position uh, uh, on Earth, uh, I think is coming from this uh, graphing showing our existence on Earth uh, in comparison to all the biological beings have, uh, being on Earth. So if you look at it, uh, we, our humanity is this little dot at the end of this huge uh, timeline. So we really exist for a fraction of time. And uh, it is very easy that we are misunderstanding, misreflecting uh, a lot of the things. So everything we are looking at, we try to uh, look with uh, un uneducated eyes. Uh, and uh, I think this, this also part of uh, where geospaces is rooted. Um, I'm not an architecture theorician, but um, I'm trying to understand where is uh, the architecture making and our uh, general architectural approach is coming, architecture approach is coming from. And when you look at primitive huts, uh, even illustrations, uh, which is the most, uh, uh, the, one of the oldest texts about uh, architecture and uh, portraying is a part of nature, you still get to see uh, this kind of royal hierarchical uh, image uh, behind that. So uh, I think there's a problem with that. and. Uh, and um, that's, why, uh, that's why we try to look at uh, the beginning of the architecture history or uh, spaces uh, in a broader sense. Uh, part, of the, uh, part of my interest is also rooted on uh, my trips when I was a kid, uh, together with my, fam fam my family, to these uh, cultural, uh, culture, cultural locations, they call, uh, historic places, let's say. Uh, it would be a combination of a lot of ancient spaces, ancient places, as you know, uh, Turkey has a variety of uh, historic artifacts all around the, uh, the, all around the uh, country. So part of that would be uh, ancient uh, settlements uh, and uh, Greek architecture and so on. Uh, the other part would be uh, this underground cities, uh, caves, uh, the uh, the things that people modified uh, instead of building uh, on, on Earth. So uh, this kind of uh, was always in my mind as I was going through school, uh, making architecture and stuff. So I think I uh, always try to see uh, how we could create a different uh, way of processing uh, uh, pro processing architecture because representation usually represents the final product, but there's a uh, there's a huge gap in between the making uh, and the imagining of spaces. So um, maybe I was thinking we were thinking this kind of is uh, is a way out, and um, we try to reflect that in the on the project. This is kind of the questions we are dealing with, and. Uh, like I said, if you look at the architecture history, there's always a, a distance with the ground, with the earth. Uh, you, you distance yourself from the nature uh, to, uh, to maybe showcase how, how humanity is incredible, or you distance yourself from society on a pedestal and so on. And uh, we were questioning like, if there's another way how we relate to the ground. Again, I'm not, uh, uh, again, these are like questions we are, uh, we are asking to ourselves. And if you look at it, uh, at the architecture history in a broader sense,
Parkinson's sound uh, no hierarchy in space uh, religious uh, buildings or so on this is uh, basically a community space uh, with a holistic uh, uh, organization uh, or there's uh, some other uh, underground cities around Cappadocia they wouldn't have any uh, obviously air conditioning or ventilation but it would work very nicely so they uh, they came to understand very uh, interesting technologies uh, through manipulating uh, earth uh, so they kind of uh, were interesting to me and uh, we, in every project we try to see if uh, if if there are ways that we could uh, learn from this simplicity, uh, but uh, create uh, overly complex, uh, interesting solutions for architecture. And one of the projects that we were interested in uh, uh, relating to that was uh, Villa Topos. Uh, so this is located in the aging, aging in, the, in this beautiful aging coast. Uh, this is completely west-facing facade, so it's extremely hard to control the sun. Uh, but we still, and it's a very hot climate, but we still like to see if we can avoid air conditioning and uh, climatization the whole year. And uh, this is a beautiful graphic. This is what happens when you go uh, below ground. Uh, you will get to uh, clo uh, come closer to the uh, comfortable temperatures uh, for ourselves. So we use that as a uh, as a reference point. We also use the local winds uh, in the uh, in the location. Uh, and we came up with, uh, uh, with, a, with a scheme that is a kind of a rough, uh, a rough abstraction of the site. Um, in our mind, these are topography lines uh, expanded and simplified in a way. Uh, if you look at the house, it looks very simple. Uh, but to, to achieve this kind of simplicity in construction uh, is uh, extremely complex because you have to work with concrete, you have to know everything uh, before the construction, uh, but we completely enjoy the process. And uh, working with concrete, I mean, this is not the most sustainable material, uh, but uh, if you can waive the 40% or uh, the 60% uh, of the maintenance cost after uh, the construction, that is already a very, uh, a uh, very nice thing to do for, for Earth. So um, we used a lot of the rough materials. You won't see a lot of details. Uh, so you, we try to leave a lot of space for expression and personal customization. Uh, we, tried to, we tried hard to uh, be, uh, uh, be sleek with the details and uh, not really complicate the uh, existing views. And uh, we hope so there's a little video. <laughs> So uh, the staircase started working as a, a vertical uh, kaleidoscope through going through the building uh, because you have uh, 180 degree uh, views to the nice aging cost, and we wanted to uh, we wanted this uh, staircase to work both as a um, uh, as a as a kind of conditioning climatization machine and also. Uh, uh, also kind of animating uh, a storyline behind the building. Another project uh, that we had to uh, experiment with uh, ideas about how we might uh, relate to the uh, uh, natural artifacts in the, land, in the, in the site was uh, Science Island in Kaunas. Uh, we are shortlisted, this was an international competition of three, 300 participants, we are shortlisted with uh, Mark Foster Gage, M. Cero, and uh, some other interesting guys. Uh, and what we, uh, what, what we thought was interesting in, the, in this island was this uh, three clusters. Uh, when you visit the island, it actually works, functions like a building. There are like different rooms, different uh, spaces, people 
uh, enjoy uh, use, doing different sports or uh, enjoying a walk and so on. So there are like variety of spaces in the same island. And we believe that was uh, emerged through uh, these three clusters. So uh, we looked at how to, we, we try to position our buildings uh, on, in relationship with that. And in the building scale, uh, we wanted to see how we could uh, learn from uh, some of the algorithms that is uh, generated around uh, this notion of regenerating nature. Uh, to me, these are kind of uh, also uh, the uh, uh, small uh, experiments of uh, AI type of thing. So this is kind of a uh, platform, this is kind of a uh, uh, equation where you seek a relationship with the uh, nature in a deeper sense. And uh, we used a lot of those, uh, we, uh, we used a lot of those in uh, different projects, but in this case, we used Alan, Alan Turing's uh, morphogenesis algorithm to generate uh, uh, biologic, uh, uh, biologic textures. And this became, this ended up becoming our openings and porosities in the, in the, uh, in the building. And it, to our, for, for ourselves, uh, we thought it, it worked nicely with the, uh, local production uh, techniques about concrete because they used to, in Lithuania, they used to produce a lot of things with the formwork, uh, with the cloth formwork and so on. So we also wanted to see how it would work with the uh, with local production techniques. And in our projects, we try to utilize the open spaces as much as interiors. So uh, the exteriors, I think, uh, quite undervalued in today's world. I mean, especially uh, with Los Angeles kind of climates, uh, there are immense opportunities you can generate outside. Uh, maybe we are also familiar with that because of the courtyards uh, for our local uh, architecture making culture uh, that's rooted on our local architecture making culture because you can create microclimates, uh, protected zones, and you can define exterior spaces with, uh, with uh, building positioning. So we were also interested in that in this project. And uh, it became, it ended up becoming a, a nice uh, experiment, uh, initiating a lot of other projects, initiating the source ideas for a lot of other projects. Uh, another project, a smaller scale project was, is called New Nature. Uh, so we started working for a brand that is working with uh, WWF and a lot of other uh, uh, social responsibility uh, uh, companies, let's say, uh, so social uh, NGOs, let's say. And uh, this brand was just emerging and we wanted to see how we could uh, potentially come up with an idea uh, for an emerging brand without a context. Because as architects, I think we are very used to working in spatial contexts and uh, relating to surrounding, but how to create something completely new. Because you don't know your building, your uh, store design is going to take place in a shopping mall or uh, a street uh, store or whatsoever. So we wanted to come up with an internal idea. And uh, we were looking at Darwin's, uh, uh, Darwin's theory of uh, hot springs. So that, I, that is kind of a theory about how first uh, biological beings uh, started happening in Earth. And uh, we also looked at uh, a lot of the algorithms that might work with this kind of concept. So uh, this is called random walk. Probably you are all familiar with that. You, if you are not familiar, you probably use it in your Spotify and all these uh, other uh, randomization apps. Uh, but it is striking visually, so we wanted to use that and we translated that, that into a three-dimensional uh, space. Uh, and we started generating uh, biological uh, interaction. Uh, we, are, we, we started uh, combining that with uh, biological intra intra uh, interaction algorithms, which is called uh, Metabol. You may, might be familiar with that also. And we obviously generated uh, a lot of iterations through that. And we started using them as uh, uh, as display um, uh, furniture, as uh, other functional furniture, basically all, all sorts of furnitures with those. And um, the uh, the uh, modules uh, are 
kind of repeating, so that would kind of uh, cut the cost uh, in a way. We started also uh, designing the lighting and other furniture because we thought if we do, if we design the furniture, this kind of is a uh, this could be reselled and uh, could take place in uh, different places and it could kind of distribute itself uh, in a way. So we started to look at everything as a as an object. This is a changing room. Uh, we didn't have room for changing room, so we wanted to have it as an object in this case. Uh, and we did a lot of iterations of the same furniture. Uh, and the background, you will see racks uh, are based on uh, Sigma profiles. Uh, that's kind of a big thing in the uh, maker culture. We also wanted to utilize those kind of components. Uh, we used uh, their trash, uh, old furniture uh, from their office uh, to, to generate, to make uh, flooring. Uh, material, so it is a lot of chopped off uh, steel, uh, uh, steel pieces you will see on the ground. Uh, we experimented with new materials. We translated textile uh, and mixed it with resin uh, to make really lightweight, really interesting uh, furniture, which we call, uh, which we ended up calling Casper. Um, and like I said, a lot of the things, uh, as the stores grow and as we uh, make more of those stores, we started uh, doing furniture that can be repeated all around. And uh, old kind of old furniture had their own story. Some of them are uh, recycled uh, packaging material. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, some uh, coming out of some material test and so on. And it is widely published, obviously. Uh, a project in Joshua Tree uh, started recently. Uh, we uh, started working on the project uh, like last year, I guess. Uh, we figured out this uh, to our interest in the geological timeline. Uh, Joshua Tree has one of the oldest uh, rock formations that is on, on that's existing, that's, that we know. Uh, up to today. So there are 1.7 billion years old rock formations in the site. Uh, we, and there is not much else. I mean, there's obviously a lot of sand and, uh, uh, and the space, spatial Joshua tree landscape. Uh, but we really wanted to see how we can relate to this kind of uh, uh, timeless uh, piece of rock. So maybe this kind of is a reminder of how, uh, how uh, what a small uh, period of uh, life we have on Earth. And we started looking at uh, these uh, uh, rock processes and tried to understand how they are emerged, and uh, we translated them into kind of three-dimensional ideas. We uh, briefly collaborated, collaborated with media about this and uh, come up with some interesting uh, mor uh, morphological uh, results. And another project we are looking at is in uh, Milano Design Week. Uh, so uh, we are working on an installation. Uh, we started working on an installation, uh, but we also tried to see what was happening in Milan in the in the past, uh, in the uh, far history uh, of Milan. Rather than the urbanistic uh, situations we know, uh, what was beyond that, and. Uh, we started looking at a lot of geological uh, maps that gives us a, a much different perspective of cities, and we we try to understand it. Uh, we we try to understand how we might might be inspired by those, and based on uh, understanding what is underground, we started. Uh, I started uh, teaching uh, in Pratt uh, master's program, uh, advanced design research studio. Uh, this fall. Uh, it still is in progress, uh, but we used a lot of the ideas that we uh, tested in different projects in this, in, this, uh, in this case. And we are looking at the natural uh, formation in New York. Uh, we look at this uh, Marshlands Conservancy, uh, which is one of the really few places, few natural, naturally natural uh, places that is left in New York. But we look at it uh, uh, we don't exactly look at it to build on top, uh, but we wanted to see how we possibly create a, a piece that is between architecture and nature. So 
uh, we decided we don't build on top of that, but we build in between uh, the suburban landscape and the, uh, the natural uh, scape we have. And students did a great job testing a lot of uh, the things we have been working uh, using AI algorithms and so on. And we translated them into uh, a lot of experimental uh, spaces. We wanted to see how, uh, how we can, how spaces can exist and how uh, spaces um, uh, kind of be more transparent and uh, less, less of the spaces. There's a really vague uh, description of what we try to do. But I guess this uh, research studio is kind of about that. And uh, they came up with a lot of uh, uh, ideas to regenerate the mar lost marshlands, uh, how we could possibly build. But the buildings all doesn't serve only human, but could also serve to, uh, to non-human uh, beings in the, in the site. So how to maybe some, some of them are working on oyster islands uh, that's combined with some uh, uh, research center and so on. Uh, some of them are looking at the schist rock and uh, looking how they emerge. So uh, they are reconstructing new islands that are lost uh, in the in the site. So this kind of helps also the flood and a variety of other things. And we try to be really a home to uh, non-human species as well as humans, obviously, in this project. Um, some, some of our uh, teammates look at uh, the, uh, uh, how the earth is shaped uh, through fault lines, uh, because all, most of the geography we see around us is actually uh, rooted on the, uh, on the earthquakes and uh, fault lines. So uh, maybe that, we thought, is an interesting way to regenerate uh, spaces uh, that's more tuned with the, with the earth. Or how we could uh, hybridize the Manhattan uh, grid with uh, nature. That was one of the questions we were asking to ourselves. Um, another uh, rock study. Uh, this is based on soil, uh, soil types. Because uh, as architects, it's interestingly, uh, we know very little about what is underground. We usually know about what is above ground, and we look at seed references and stuff. Uh, but unlike doctors or uh, medical specialists, we have very little knowledge about uh, what we are constructing on. So they wanted to uh, see what is a sensible place to build on top and tried working around that. And we tried to also come up with different uh, foundation ideas and so on. And it's like cold shower. We are, uh, I'm jumping back from uh, uh, the theory theoretical uh, terror pro projects to actual projects that we are working on. But I think uh, it's like cold shower again. Uh, it really is useful to see how many ideas you can really translate into reality in really optimized economical situations or some kind of material boundaries and so on. So this is, uh, this is kind of an office building. Uh, we are building back in Istanbul. and. Uh, we are again looking on, at uh, the mica mineral that's found on the site, and we are seeing ways to translate the mica into, uh, into materials. So uh, when you are working on a building on a large scale, uh, you, especially kind of an office, that's a lot of repeating functions. So in repeating functions, maybe we thought it is better to work on the material rather than the general gesture because uh, uh, because m most of the things are going to be repeating. And if you are able to change some material, that maybe is a route for other projects. Because these material producers take, uh, we have seen a lot of cases, they take our projects, uh, project materials, and go to the other architects and present them. Uh, look what we are doing. And uh, this is interesting. Do you want to use that and stuff? We kind of like that, because then it becomes uh, kind of an innovation uh, collaboration somehow. Uh, po possibly a lot of the uh, materials that you see is interesting in the uh, material fabricators library. They are possibly rooted on uh, some architects in, uh, experimenting with different things. And uh, uh, inspired by the uh, informed, more specifically informed by the mica formations uh, underground, we uh, generated this double facade uh, surface combined with, uh, uh, with some uh, mineral uh, 
uh, mineral-based uh, panels. And we try really hard to uh, composition, compose these materials in a way so we are able to uh, make the work building, uh, make, uh, make, work, uh, make the building work as a uh, climatization machine by itself. And there's another project that's uh, hopefully under construction soon. Uh, it's called Ecoton. Uh, Ecoton means a uh, transition zone between the nature and the, uh, and the uh, a transition zone, zone between uh, different environments. Uh, and this is widely pub one of the widely published projects again. Uh, also in this project, we tried really hard to understand how we can avoid uh, making a classical column uh, uh, column building uh, because this was going to be an uh, office building and then everything is dictated by structure in the most, uh, most office projects. So how we could come up with an idea that is beyond uh, the column uh, we, we know. And we also wanted to see how we can uh, create a component that, uh, that integrates a lot of the building necessities. Uh, we obviously test, do a lot of Houdini, Rhino, and uh, other tests. Uh, but most important thing that came out of the, from the process is working with the engineers. So we started working with structural engineers to understand what kind of uh, uh, forces that really shape the columns as we know and how we could avoid it. So we ended up coming up with really, uh, really thin uh, slender columns, uh, but large footings. So it ended up being uh, stronger than the classical, uh, classical columns as we know. And we run over budget, obviously, <laughs> twice, the, uh, twice the budget that we were allowed. Uh, we find a solution uh, decreasing the amount of spaces that we generate. So we use a lot of the open spaces and we came, uh, we, we try to convince the client that these open spaces are actually our meeting spaces. So uh, we ended up uh, not doing a lot of the meeting spaces and staying in the budget. Uh, and a lot of the interiors uh, are continuation of the same uh, material. Uh, and uh, all the climatization uh, components are uh, hidden in the, in the office. This is one of the projects uh, my office people like a lot. Maybe this is, uh, this is a uh, meta project, this is a completely digital project, it's a museum for, uh, for furniture, collection of uh, furniture brand uh, back in Turkey. They are doing a lot of stuff also in the US and uh, we, made this uh, museum, and I think it is also, again, maybe interesting because everyone can go see it uh, because it's digital. I mean, I've been traveling to a lot of places. You could be a, even a star architect and uh, build a lot of stuff around the world, but there will be only few people that's gonna get to chance to see those. So I think maybe for young generation, there's a lot of interest, a lot of interesting opportunity for you guys uh, to go try these things. Uh, obviously, this is uh, more interesting when you go visit it. Uh, but the idea behind that is again based on uh, one of the this uh, this ancient um, uh, prehistoric uh, settlements I have seen, uh, which is uh, which I mentioned earlier, Çatalhöyük. Uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, the uh, this is the first uh, large settlement uh, that's existing on Earth uh, that's known to. Uh, known to human. And what they have done here in terms of furniture, because we are working for a furniture company, uh, what was interesting here was that they didn't have furniture. That was kind of continuation of the same space. So it was uh, made, everything was made of mud. Uh, so you wouldn't have a table, a chair, or bed in the common sense. Uh, even graves were embedded inside the uh, spaces. So we thought this is a really interesting thing to do. And uh, maybe one day uh, we will get to a point that we don't, uh, uh, not only things get smaller and lighter, but maybe everything disappears and there's only space in a way. And we speculated on that idea. We uh, made a lot of uh, spaces based on that. And it ends up uh, with this kind of uh, more 
uh, latent space at the end of your uh, trip in the museum. Uh, mobility data of uh, mobility data for innovation uh, is another project uh, that we were invited uh, to, to to work for an electric comp electric car company. Um, it was a confidential project, but there's not a lot of uh, Turkish electrical uh, car companies existing. Uh, so uh, we were invited for this competition, but this is also one of the most beautiful uh, spaces, uh, one of the most beautiful landscapes you, you should avoid building. So uh, we tried really hard uh, in the during the project, we tried really hard to uh, uh, to narrow down, down the uh, size of the footprint of the building uh, by uh, into uh, into half, uh, so we ended up uh, this kind of a building where we extend the landscape. So the landscape becomes uh, part of the building. Uh, you can carry the because you are working with the car. You really need uh, street level a lot. E either they are going to work on the car or they will display the car. So we really tried hard to see how we can really integrate this. Uh, uh, these ramps into the project, and they become kind of characteristics uh, of the of the project also. So uh, you will see a lot of the ramps going around. Um, we did a lot of sun control because it it also needed a lot of it. It was it needed to be positioned in this way to avoid consuming all the land. This is how it looks. And there's a small video about it. Um, it uh, uh, takes references uh, from the landscape, and uh, we try to extend the building to the water, so it becomes kind of a PR in the same time. Uh, and we come up with a, a structural strategy that is because when you take the car on the on, on top of a building, everything changes structurally. Uh, but we still try to. Uh, utilize these diagonals in the in the space as a part of the structural system, and this is what we end up having. And uh, this may be uh, familiar with John. Uh, this project uh, we uh, uh, we, con we uh, entered into interna another international competition where we were shortlisted um, in Korea. It is a library competition. Uh, it is. Based in Songdo in Cheon, uh, it is an innovation uh, in our mind. It is an innovation library. Uh, so we thought, uh, what is maybe the source of innovation in this industries built in the industry city? Uh, and we look uh, back in the history, and uh, obviously Renaissance and a lot of uh, innovations are also based on uh, printing. We thought uh, the printing in printing became. Uh, uh, printing democratized uh, the reach of information in a way, and um, maybe in the sense of uh, in, in the sense of fabrication, 3D printing uh, is able to take over this kind of notion. And we started working with a lot of 3D printing components and translate them into uh, spaces. Obviously, 3D printing cannot carry a lot of 3D printed buildings cannot carry a lot of weight, so we combine it with a uh, wooden structure on top, uh, so it would end up being kind of a lightweight structure uh, alongside. And maybe we thought the process of building uh, could be uh, could be worth watching. So uh, we uh, organized uh, the, the building around that kind of processes because it, it might be interesting also to see that. Uh, also, looking at the Asian culture, we have seen that a uh, library is not a building that you go in and study, but you actually uh, store books and you take out your books, go out and uh, read in the garden. So it's kind of a really poetic way of uh, making a library. That's why we called it a Sky uh, Learning Sky. Uh, at Tent, we uh, made a lot of the uh, a lot of the spaces openings. Is maybe also partially based on that uh, we, we, we are not able to uh, make a lot of uh, big spans going through the, the whole whole space. Uh, so kids 
uh, portion and so on. So not actual divisions, but uh, enclosed clusters, innovation clusters, and the rest is kind of a free learning space. And the building is kind of a very low height, not significant from in outside, but inside is a different uh, story, hopefully. Uh, I know Refik uh, visited you guys uh, a couple of years ago, I guess. Uh, is a long time collaborator. It actually, uh, this actually is the one of the first projects uh, that kind of be part of the reason that I was that I went back to Istanbul. Uh, in 2011, uh, this was uh, this was a year the Istanbul was culture center. Uh, we were invited by Yapo Credit Culture Center to make a, make an exhibition, uh, make a make a facade proposal more specifically, uh, because the building was under under construction. It was going through a transformation, so uh, the exhibition to be on the facade uh, was the brief, and we came up with a couple of ideas. Everything seemed. Uh, all the alternatives, uh, we, we had three alternatives. We usually have a couple of alternatives when we are going to see a client. And usually we start with the crazy one and interesting one to us, but it is always over budget, so we go to the uh, next one. Uh, spe especially in this case, uh, this didn't happen. And uh, they, they just didn't want to see anything else. It, it clicked uh, with, with the client. Um, the client and uh, the, the uh, creator uh, of the uh, exhibition uh, we figured later on was a sound engineer and the whole concept was about uh, sound acoustics of the space how acoustics potentially uh, shape spaces was the, our initial uh, initial idea that we were chasing uh, and we went through Istiklal. if you uh, but there's a really nice movie called crossing the bridge if you guys have to have the chance you you can go see it uh, it is about diversity of Turkish music and uh, diversity of Turkish music in the city specifically. And inspired by that, we thought maybe beyond the uh, beyond the architectural characteristics, uh, the uh, the music of the streets, the acoustics of the space is the main uh, founding uh, component of the space. Uh, so we did a lot of quadraphonic sound scans through the. Uh, Istiklal Street, uh, which is the bus busiest, uh, most central street in, in, in Istanbul. Uh, and we trans started translating them into three-dimensional forms. Uh, we used Gaussian acoustic analysis. This, uh, again, a simple uh, algorithm that translates uh, sound data into uh, spatial data, into uh, three-dimensional data. Through that, we also generated uh, construction drawings in an uh, unlikely way, let's say. Uh, imagining that we will draw everything, uh, we will prepare everything, and we go to contractors, and the, uh, the bidding is going to happen, and somebody is going to start constructing, uh, which ended up not happening. So these are other tests, material tests, like we prepared all the structural details, the uh, wooden spans and so on. Um, it ended up not happening, uh, meaning the, uh, the contractors uh, didn't really feel like they are doing the project. So we ended up making the project ourselves. The, we undertake the whole construction processes. Uh, I thought that was, that was kind of a really uh, changing moment in my, uh, in my story, uh, because we got to learn everything from structural details to uh, fabrication details. It was extremely useful. So it was like a, uh, making an architecture model in a huge scale. Uh, what you will see here is this really lightweight wooden structure combined with uh, steel tensile cables and uh, modular uh, uh, modular steel uh, components. Everything is uh, obviously drawn and cut through CNC fabrication, so it was completely digital, uh, uh, digital cat to cam uh, kind of process. Uh, that's how it looked at then. So the the general jo uh, general, general uh, morphology of the uh, facade reflects uh, the uh, the street's acoustic landscape. Uh, but it is not as simple because uh, sound is also made out of a lot of uh, bits and details. You can uh, generate some kind of a uh, 
abstract feeling about that, but there were too many details to represent. So Refik came up with a, uh, with a really beautiful animation to be uh, a generated animation to be part of the whole installation. So this is one of, uh, I think, uh, So it was one of the few um, uh, pieces that digital uh, and architectural uh, layers came together in this sense. And to my knowledge, uh, since 2011, it is uh, still one of a kind uh, piece that's bringing uh, these two uh, layers in this scale. Um, another project that we got to build, uh, Transform, another uh, project uh, that uh, uh, that's in the same location, is in Istiklal Street. Uh, in this case, this is the old movie theater, and we seek uh, a way to bring back, bring the building back into life. It's called Fitash, uh, Fitash uh, Movie Theaters. Uh, we translated, we wanted to translate that into such a thing that uh, that uh, building goes back to life, because uh, everything in this street, in this shopping streets, they work extremely well. But if you go above floors or behind uh, uh, behind the main street, things uh, start to stall. So uh, how to make, uh, how to create this kind of uh, vivid street life inside the building was our main question. So we started connecting the two different streets uh, that's going through the building, and we wanted to come up with a uh, shop mix, the uh, function mix. That's not like in a, uh, that's not like a shopping mall, but it is more of a, a new generation's uh, uh, collection of uh, spaces, uh, uh, space that they would spend time. So it is from, uh, it would uh, include a nightclub, uh, co-working offices, uh, movie theaters, uh, bowling, arcade, and all sorts of fun stuff uh, inside building connected with a. Uh, vertical street, we say. Um, and the facade was uh, designed to uh, define uh, specific weaves from inside to outside. So you would be able to see uh, very specific frames uh, because you don't have a lot of chances to see this kind of this street in, in different levels. Uh, we thought that's important. Uh, and the enclosures work with the functions. So uh, the nightclub would have a more restricted internal uh, kind of view, the offices would have more uh, specific views uh, related with the uh, related with the internal table organization and stuff. Uh, we also wanted to bring a public balcony that you could uh, go up, spend time uh, without really needing to pay anything. And if you see the buildings around, it is actually a very strange uh, neighborhood in a way. Uh, a lot of the things are uh, kind of, it's like a downtown LA. But not exactly. It, is, it still is uh, very vivid and a lively neighborhood. Uh, but also, a lot of things are uh, rusting. So we wanted to see, we wanted to give the message that new things uh, still emerge in this location, and that uh, we thought could be an inspiration. Uh, and the building is still under construction. Uh, there are like different pieces: the concert hall, the movie theaters. There. Uh, they're build they're in process as the building still evolve. And last project I want to mention is the uh, Istanbul City Museum. Um, this project is under construction about uh, seven years. Uh, 
seven or eight years, maybe. I don't remember now. Uh, it is a very complex thing to build museums to, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, public institutions. Uh, so, and, but it is a very interesting uh, story also. The story started in 2014 when we were invited for Venice Biennale to represent Turkey in, the, in its inaugural uh, first uh, representation in Venice Biennale. <coughs> Uh, we started looking at uh, how the geography really uh, shapes the city because Istanbul is not a city that is planned in a, a classical European way. Uh, it is more self-planned city, more of a self-planned city. And if you look at it, when you visit Istanbul, you will think it's a mess. There's no meaning behind it. There was like a lot of random stuff happening, uh, which is in some cases maybe true, but uh, we have also seen major things that's shaping uh, this kind of crazy, uh, crazy lovely city. Um, and I think this, uh, these graphics uh, talk themselves. Uh, uh, we started looking a lot of the geographic, uh, topographical information and how they potentially uh, shape the city. And we started speculating uh, what kind of continuities we, we might uh, create between those. And through that, and it, this is not only Istanbul, I think all the cities, including Los Angeles, has this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, situation where underground re reflects above ground. This is maybe a known fact to you guys. Uh, the, what you see as a, a height profile on top of uh, New York is actually a reflection of what you have underground. So uh, we also look at that in the studio a little bit. Uh, and through that, we, we were invited for Istanbul City Museum competition. Uh, we also get to be invited in a lot of other museums. Uh, around Turkey, is Cinemachi Museum under construction uh, since 2018. Uh, it relates to the uh, the historic uh, city walls next to it, and kind of recomposes all these materials that's already on the site. Uh, when you are making a museum, it's kind of a contradictory uh, uh, contradictory function because you you don't want to look, you don't want to make a lot of windows, but you also want to maybe connect with the city in some cases. So we wanted to come up with this. Uh, special windows where you don't receive a lot of light, but from inside out, out uh, you give a lot of interesting uh, views, hopefully. So, and this kind of are, for us, is part of uh, the wall building uh, culture uh, that is, uh, that, that's based on the wall building culture, this kind of detail. Uh, along with that, uh, we always try to uh, see is, uh, museums as a habitat. So the outside, inside uh, exhibitions, uh, the, uh, the uh, way you uh, visit, the sit, uh, visit the museum, it becomes really part of the same thing, hopefully. And the last project, uh, like I said, is the Museum of Istanbul. Uh, this is located next to Topkapı, uh, in, located in Topkapı. Uh, to the urban land walls again, we some, some, for some reason we end up doing a lot of work around the land walls, which I don't uh, complain. Uh, but this was, uh, uh, this was an interesting site. It is like a perfect square, 100 meters by 100 meters. I never get the chance uh, to work in a per perfect uh, rectangle. So I guess we, some piece of us wanted to kind of disturb the whole thing. Uh, but beyond that, we thought it would be a nice idea to be able to connect with a master plan because these walls are very um, a unique piece of Istanbul where you don't really see them as a an, as a holistic piece. And when you go up the uh, ceiling, <laughs> go up the roof, uh, or when you take a trip around that, you completely. Uh, go to a different era of the city. So we really wanted to connect with that in the larger scale. And uh, this kind of transformation, this courtyard, tra this courtyard positioning uh, relate to that in the, in the larger scale. And this became kind of the source of all planning uh, throughout the uh, making of the museum. 
this kind of twisted cord initiated a lot of interesting spaces inside. Uh, it reflected on the facade. Um, the structural system, structural system reflected into a mechanical and electrical organization. Uh, that also reflected into panelization and, uh, and modularity in construction components. So it became kind of a, uh, uh, the, the larger gesture became a kind of a, uh, a par part of the, all the construction layers. Uh, we got the chance to work uh, incredible engineers, uh, Niv Technik uh, from London to Peter Bayer from Vienna. We, we got to see how uh, you really can make in interesting architecture uh, through collaboration with uh, this kind of real spatial know-how. Uh, uh, the volume is uh, kind of hovering on top of this park, so in, in between piece is completely public. You can you have reach from uh, all sides, so it really demands to be part of the uh, park, the surrounding part 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 of part of this public space around it. And on the rooftop, you have it. You have this beautiful garden that's a uh, combination of uh, endemic pe endemic plantation from Istanbul that kind of is really part of the exhibition uh, to ourselves. Um, and inside out, you have uh, small windows looking at the spe specific uh, framings again. And uh, the facade, in a way, uh, is uh, designed in combination with this uh, general gesture, gesture and uh, the uh, ideas, uh, the, the technic, technic realities of the uh, fabrication. Uh, obviously, there are a lot. The, when you talk about a museum, it is also a lot of other spaces, uh, the conference halls, uh, libraries. Uh, uh, spaces for uh, workshops and so on. And uh, it has a 7,000 square meter huge exhibition space uh, created by uh, Luca Molinari and uh, uh, dozens of uh, academicians and researchers uh, that work through the, uh, the inventory about uh, two years' time. And uh, the complicated thing about the museum is like sometimes you exhibit small things, sometimes you uh, exhibit large things. And maybe uh, that's where architecture become really uh, important because you have to be able to let people zoom in and zoom out using spatial organization uh, uh, ideas, let's say. And there's a little video and I'd like to wrap it up after. modern city and the historic city, uh, just uh, in between the outer skirts and the, uh, the more culturally uh, rich internal, internal piece. It, in that sense, is a specific uh, location because it is able to maybe connect uh, this kind of uh, city interiors with outside.
Thank you.